All right, guys, so in this video, I'm going to give you a simple framework which you can use to cope with every situation in life. And with that, I actually mean every situation. So if you're feeling miserable right now or you're going through something and you need to find a way to cope with it, or maybe you're feeling good right now, but you want to prepare yourself for the future whenever something bad will happen, this video is made for you. So let's not wait any longer and let's get right into it. So let's imagine for a second that you are in a loving relationship with a girl, but then she suddenly decides to leave you and you're all by yourself and your heart is broken. Whenever you're in a tough situation like this, there are two main strategies you can choose to cope with it. With the first one being resistance. You don't like the situation, so you decide to not accept it as the truth and you resist to whatever is happening. This is an option that many people choose and it can lead to a few different scenarios with the first one being that you start fighting against the situation. So in the context of having a broken heart, this could mean that you start arguing with your ex, telling her that she made the wrong decision, or try and convince her to keep the relationship going. So it's basically a desperate attempt to make sure that the uncomfortable feeling that you have will go away. And then another way in which resistance can show up is by trying to escape the pain that you're feeling, this might mean doing things like drinking a lot, playing video games, scrolling on social media, or engaging in any other self-destructive habit to distract yourself. And then last of all, what can also happen is that you go in denial in order to get rid of the pain. For example, you might pretend that you haven't actually broken up, convincing yourself that something just happened and that eventually everything will be fine and the two of you will be back together as always. So all of these examples are different forms of resistance. You don't want to see the truth and accept things for the way they are, so you do everything to avoid it. And it's very important here to recognize that coping mechanisms like these are not healthy and should be avoided as much as possible. Because the thing with resistance is that it will never solve any problem for you, but it will only make things worse. It's basically like some temporary hope or distraction that just covers up the pain and suffering that will eventually come when you do have to face the truth. But fortunately for you, there's also another way to cope with a tough situation, and that is instead of resisting it, you decide to accept it. Which means that you fully recognize and accept whatever is happening to you right now as it is. You don't fight against it, you don't try to escape it, and you don't deny the situation, but you look at the situation as it is and say to yourself, right now, this is how things are and I accept this as the truth. And this approach can be very powerful because what this does is it puts you in a space where you can see things so clearly that it allows you to then make a decision on what you're going to do with the situation and how to move forward. But despite it being very powerful, it's often very challenging and hard for people to do this. Because when we take a look at the graph that you're seeing right now and look at what happens when you stop resisting and start accepting the situation, you can see that although things seem to get better in the future, there is this window where at first you will actually feel worse compared to when you were resisting. And why is that? Well, because now you fully see and acknowledge the truth and there's nothing covering up the pain anymore which is of course a very scary thing because it puts you in a very vulnerable position. So to give you guys a tool on how to make it easier to make this switch from resistance to acceptance, you can start practicing meditation and I'll explain why. Meditation is an exercise where you focus your attention on something simple like your breath. And then whenever you get distracted by your thoughts or emotions and you notice this happening, you bring your attention back to your breath. Now what this does is it trains your mind to stay more present and therefore allowing you to look at what is happening inside of your mind and body. And when you do this often enough, you will eventually notice any thoughts and emotions coming up whenever they arrive without immediately reacting to them. This is also known as mindfulness. So whenever you're in a tough situation, instead of immediately reacting to your painful feelings and choosing the immediate comfort that resistance gives, you now have this window where you can look at your pain more calmly and make a clear decision on what you're going to do about it. And now that you understand that resistance only provides a temporary escape, while acceptance is what gives you long-term fulfillment and allows you to cope with the problem properly, you can now mindfully make the decision to pick acceptance instead. 
And once you're able to do this and you move from resistance to acceptance and you arrive in the space where you can decide what you want to do about the situation, there are then a couple of things you can pick from to do here. The first one is doing something about the situation. The second one is removing yourself from the situation. And the last one is fully accepting the situation. So let's start with doing something about the situation. Now what this means is that you decide to take action based on what you think is the right move to make at that moment. So when we bring back the example of you and your girlfriend who just broke up, you can for example decide to talk to her and tell her that you're sorry, hoping to get back together. Or maybe if you realize you don't want to get her back, but you just want to say sorry and make things right, you can also choose to do that and then say goodbye and move on after that. Now, the great thing about this approach is that it will benefit you even if it doesn't give you the result you hoped for. Because when you choose to do something about the situation, you're making progress and you're taking control of your life instead of staying stuck in this rut when you're only resisting. Just the simple fact that you're trying already gives you a lot of fulfillment. So then the results don't even matter that much. So if you want your ex back, but she ends up rejecting you, it might suck for a minute, but at least you can think to yourself like, hey, I did the best I could do and there's no regret. And when there's no regret, it will be easier for you to move on there. And then the second option you have is removing yourself from the situation, which means that you decide that you no longer want to deal with the situation. So you're going to fully remove yourself from it. So when it comes to your ex, you might block her on all platforms, delete all the pictures you had together, and avoid places where you might see her. Because by doing that, you're able to remove any attachment that you still have to her, allowing you to move on more quickly. Now, removing yourself is also a very powerful strategy because it allows you to handle situations where you believe there's not really anything left for you to do about it, but you also don't want to constantly be confronted by it anymore if you don't have to be. By removing yourself, you decide that things are over for good and let it be a thing of the past, making it easier for you to heal. However, it's important to note that this shouldn't be confused with escaping here, like I talked about before. Because while escaping comes from a place of not accepting the truth and trying to cover up the pain you feel, therefore keeping the underlying problem unresolved, removing yourself comes from a place of acceptance where you mindfully make the decision that stepping away from the problem is the best thing to do here and therefore actually resolving the problem. And then the last option you have is fully accepting the situation, which basically means that you're not going to do anything about the situation or remove yourself from it, but you just let things be the way they are without putting up any resistance. If for example, you realize that your breakup is final because she's already with another guy, so there's not really anything you can do about the situation anymore. And then you also happen to be in the shared friend group where you see her a lot of times. So there's also not really a way to fully remove yourself from the situation. The only option you have left is to just fully accept things the way they are and just allow time to heal things. Full acceptance is a great strategy for when there's nothing left you can do and you also can't remove yourself from the situation. In this case, you choose to fully let things be the way they are and not let any resistance come in. It's easy, for example, to start complaining about the fact that there's nothing you can do, but that would mean you would fall back into resistance again. By resisting to the pain, you only add more pain to it and prevent yourself from healing from it. But by fully accepting things the way they are, you allow the process of healing to take place and things will get better as soon as possible. As a wise man once said, if you can't change the situation, you have to change yourself. And also, start meditating, you idiot. Now, what's very important to note here is that whatever option you pick to cope with the situation, you should always only pick one of these and then accept the consequences of that decision. Because where things often go wrong is that you pick one of these three but you're not really sure about your decision, so you end up suffering a lot. If you, for example, decide that you want to remove yourself from the situation, so you block your ex and you delete all the pictures and stuff like that, but deep down you also want to talk to her and try and get her back, but then you also feel like blocking is still the best thing to do, but then you also still want her back, then what happens is that you create a mental conflict. 
You're stuck between two options, which always leads to suffering because you're never satisfied with your decision and constantly swap between them. And the same can happen if you, for example, decide to accept the situation as it is and let things be the way they are. But deep down, you also still feel like there's something you could do about the situation. And you continue to move back and forth between these two because then you will also create the same mental conflict. So if you catch yourself in the situation and mental state where you're like, I don't know what to do because nothing I do seems to help here. It's probably because you haven't made a clear decision on how to cope with the situation. So in this case, the key is to make sure that you're just choosing one of these options instead of being stuck between multiple ones. Now, of course, what can happen is that the option you picked doesn't really seem to work out for you. So you're thinking about changing up the plan and actually picking a different one. If you, for example, decide to do something about the situation, so you ask your ex to take you back, but she says no and things don't work out, you might be like, okay, there's nothing I can really do anymore. So then I'm going to remove myself from the situation instead, because now that seems like a better option. And in this case, that's totally fine. Because what you're doing here is instead of being mentally stuck between multiple options, you're trying one thing at a time and you only pick another one once you realize that maybe some other option is better for you. There's never more than one option you want to apply, which means that there is no mental conflict anymore. And once again, something that can really help you do this properly is practicing meditation and creating mindfulness. Because with mindfulness, you will be more aware of whenever you have this inner conflict going on, of not being able to pick an option, and you will have this space where you can calmly look at your situation and pick the option that's best for you. So when we look at an overview here of what we covered, you can see the multiple paths which you can take to cope with a situation. And if you want to cope in the most healthy way possible, there are two potential pitfalls which you need to avoid. The first one is the suffering that comes from choosing the path of resistance instead of acceptance. And the second one is the suffering that comes from the inner conflict caused by indecisiveness when it comes to picking one of the healthy coping strategies. Fortunately though, the solutions are quite simple. The first one is to move from resistance to acceptance as quickly as possible by realizing that resistance only holds you back and keeps you stuck. And the second one is to always choose only one healthy coping strategy at a time by realizing that indecisiveness creates an inner conflict which keeps you stuck. To help you achieve this, practicing meditation and creating mindfulness can be extremely effective since it gives you a space where you can clearly observe your current state. In this space, you will be able to notice whenever you're resisting, allowing you to make a mindful decision to stop resisting, and you will also notice whenever you have an inner conflict going on, allowing you to make a mindful decision to only pick one option which you think is the best for you. By doing these, you will be able to experience the least amount of suffering when trying to cope with a tough situation which means you are able to live a more calm and peaceful life. And that brings us to the end of the video, guys. I hope this was able to give you some valuable insights and help you with whatever you're facing right now. Be sure to take a screenshot of this framework so you can use it whenever you're in a tough situation and correct yourself to take the right path if necessary. If you already know something you're going to use this for, let me know down below in the comments how you're going to do that to make sure that you're holding yourself accountable and I would also just love to hear what all you guys are up to. And that leaves me with only one thing left to say, and that is to get off YouTube, and start taking action on this advice, so you won't forget about this advice, but actually change your life. Stop thinking, start doing. Take care.